morning folks, or good afternoon in my case. Mm. Welcome to the vlog. Milk. Yes. One of the finest things to come out of a mammal's body, if you like. So yes, this is whole fat milk. Mm. From the supermarket. Tesco special, nothing particularly different about this milk. And today we're going to use it to make some mozzarella. Whilst we're in Tesco's, I looked at the mozzarella offering in there, and it's all the kind of stuff that's stored in bags of water. It's stored in whey, actually, or it should be, or a salt solution. I don't like that kind of stuff. A week or two ago, one of a, a friend of mine brought some really nice mozzarella which had been dry stored into the pub. It was firm, it was creamy, it was tangy, it was perfect. The Tesco offerings, probably good mozzarellas. So I come armed today with 12 pints of whole milk from Tesco. I believe it's pasteurised and I believe it's been homogenised. That's not going to put me off today. So what we're going to do is get the pan down we're going to heat it up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which, hold on, I don't do Fahrenheit very often, about 32 degrees C, and we're going to add some rennet, and I don't have any citric acid at home, and I can't be bothered to drive into the brewery, so we're going to go with lemon juice instead of the citric acid. Now the acidity is what makes the mozzarella stretch. So if we don't get this right, it'll fail and it'll be a rubbery cheese. It won't stretch and it won't melt, but it'll still be cheese. So let's get stuck in. I'm playing it by ear. Uh, why don't you come along with me for the ride? So here is a large pan on the heat. Excuse the hob, it's a bit messy, I cook breakfast, quite frankly I can't be bothered to tidy it up. So we're going to pop in the full six pint container from this particular jug. And then we're going to add a couple more things to the milk whilst we heat it. I've got the heat on underneath, but I've only got it on low. We're going to add now some calcium chloride flakes, which are these little fellas in here. Now these are to help the curd set a little bit firmer. So I've just taken a pinch, literally about six or seven flakes, and I've uh, dissolved it into this little bit of water. So we're going to pop that in there now. And then I'm going to add a further two pints of milk out of this carton. So that should take us to around a gallon of milk. Hopefully we'll achieve around a pound of cheese. And then what I'm gonna do is gently bring the temperature up to 90 degrees F or around 32 degrees centigrade. And as soon as we've hit that magic number, we're gonna be adding some rennet and some citric acid. Uh, not citric acid, lemon juice. I don't actually have any citric acid, so lemon juice it is. So we're nearly there actually with this. We're just a couple of degrees away. So that will probably get there by the time I finish stirring. So in here we have 10 tablespoons of lemon juice. So that's in. And also in here we have half a teaspoon of rennet, it's animal rennet. So they are now in. So this is where the cheese making process happens proper. We need to get this fully blended before the curd starts to form, which won't be long at all. So you should be doing this gently, but I've added a lot of citric acid there, so I wanted to give it a good stir. Let's have a look at what temperature we've hit. That is 32 degrees Let's give it a little burst of heat 
and you can see it's actually already starting to firm up you can see if I lift it there's a little curd there already so I think that's enough heat so what we're going to do you see that if I just zoom right in you can see the curd starting to form so we're going to go away now and we're going to leave this for 10 minutes maybe 15 to set up dead firm so we're back several minutes later and as you can see we've got a curd but it's not set really silky um, I've got to put that down to the fact that I've got old rennet and uh, homogenized milk so now what we're going to do is just cut the curd into about one inch cubes like a checkerboard pattern all over the top making sure to go all the way to the bottom and up the side of the pan and then we're going to go in the opposite direction and you should now start to see how the curd is coming away from the whey <laughs> as we're going across and at the same time, I'm going to put the heat back on. I do that every time, wrong bloody thing. And we're going to slowly bring the temperature up to about 110 Fahrenheit, which I am reliably informed is approximately 45 degrees, 42 degrees, something like that. So with the heat coming from the bottom of the pot, we're going to gently start to fold these curds so that that heat isn't concentrated at the bottom. And what we're doing now is cooking the curd. And the longer we do this process, the more we agitate the curd, the drier and the firmer the cheese will be. Don't worry if it breaks up a little bit further down the process we will be scooping this out anyway to create a lump of cheese when we take it out and away from the whey um, and we're going to be squeezing it all together so the more we knock about the curd at this stage the more whey is going to be released like I say creating a a drier and a firmer mozzarella at the end of the process. Right, we're about five minutes in now. I've turned the heat off as we've hit the target temp, 105 to 110 Fahrenheit, around 40 to 42 degrees C. Anywhere around there is fine. Uh, and we're just now agitating the curd constantly to try and get the whey to come out of the protein. And we're going to continue to do this just gently. We're not really going to town. We're not whisking it. We're not making mashed potato. We're just agitating. We're just moving it around softly. As you can see, letting the weight of the spoon do the work. And we're going to continue to do this for another five minutes. Don't worry if it's six or seven minutes. Don't worry if it's four minutes. Just as long as it gets some agitation at this temperature. We're cooking those curds. Right, so now I'm just uh, checking the temperature. It's been about five or six minutes. Um, I've got the heat back on. I'm making sure we're up to 110 degrees. And now the curds have almost got a skin on them if you look at that so what we've done I think the technical name for this correct me if I'm wrong I think this is called scalding the curl curds curled so what we've done is we've scalded the curds you can see there all this stuff floating on the surface is the fat is like the buttermilk this is what you'd make ricotta out of essentially uh, so yeah we've firmed the curds up they've all clumped together nicely 
the temperature I believe is as close to 110 Fahrenheit or 44, 43, 44 degrees C as I care to get it. So what we're going to do next is just pull out um, a plate. That'll do. And on that plate we're going to pop a colander. We'll knock the heat back off and we're going to slowly bring these curds out of the pot leaving as much of the whey behind as possible Whee! so if I try and frame this you'll see exactly what we're doing there we go, see if that's a little bit better for framing so you can see that the curds are complying quite nicely you see how they've all joined up together got a slot spoon to do this and as soon as you start to lift them out of the liquid their own weight sort of makes them firm up a little bit and then they sort of just flop off the spoon almost as one you could put it in a deeper pan if you like I think I'll get away with a plate so far doing this and then just every now and then we're just going to tip that way back in there there we go we don't want to throw the whey away just yet because we're going to use it for the next stage which is cooking the curd and stretching the mozzarella and when we get that stretch we know we've achieved our goal so at this point we have basically made cheese curds so you can go ahead and make some poutine so when I've got all of these curds out I'm also going to sprinkle over the top and probably do it now actually um, about half a teaspoon about half a teaspoon of just table salt they always say cheese salt or kosher salt just get the regular salt onto it don't worry too much about it Let's see if we can get some more chunks on there there we go so that's salted then we're going to keep fishing around in here for all of the leftover curds So I've just popped the heat back on the main ring and we're going to take the whey now, we've almost got all of the curds out of there, we're going to take the whey up to 80 degrees C or about 175 Fahrenheit and then uh, we're going to put this mass of curd, believe it or not, back in. Right, I just want to catch this moment on camera um, before I spill it on the floor. So I'm just going to turn the curd over in the colander and you can see there exactly how firm it's become now. Look how it just stands up on its own. That curd's now becoming a proper mass all blended together and we're still getting quite a lot of whey coming out the bottom. So the more you turn it at this point, the drier it's going to become. This will affect the dryness and the firmness of the cheese at the end and every time you turn it you'll notice that you'll get more whey coming out of the bottom so I'm just going to turn this a couple of times and we're still fishing around in here a little bit I've been doing this for the past five minutes now and the temperature is getting close to where we want it so we're up to 65 degrees C so we're still heating. What I'm going to do now is just pop all of the curd back in to keep it warm. And I've popped it back in on the colander because I don't want to scorch it on the bottom of the pan. So we can continue to mix from beneath because this pan's big enough, fortunately. And I can also still take a reading of the temperature 
I normally use a digital probe, but uh, all mine are at work, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to use what I've got. Okay, so now we've got the pot up to temperature. And you can see the curds beginning to behave very, very differently. So now what we want to do is try and get this mass of curd to stretch. So I've got these gloves on that I use for brewing because this mass is hot, believe it or not. So what we want to do is begin to fold the curd in on itself and eventually it will start to come together as a shiny mass and be recognizable as mozzarella. So we're just folding it in on itself and it's slowly slowly coming together and the internal temperature of the cheese at this point wants to be about 145 Fahrenheit. There we go. Look at that now, it's changing. So it's really quite hot. So doing this without gloves on can be a little bit painful. Um, I've seen some videos on YouTube where the old Italian boys do it all in the pan with sticks. But yeah, as you can see, now it's starting to resemble, look at the silkiness of it, it's starting to resemble mozzarella. So if we can get the rest of the mass out. There we go. We just basically need to work it all together. And it can be quite difficult to get it all out. Just look at that. Didn't take long at all, did it? Beautiful looking, silky, smooth mozzarella. So I'm going to take this colander out now, pop it back on the plate, because what I would like to do is get the rest of this curd. And there's not a lot there, so it's quite difficult to fish it out on its own. There we go. So if I just slide this out onto the plate, at least I'll be able to grab it. And I'll also just have a little fish around. Any that's escaped? No, not really. So we'll just get this mass. We'll pop that into the center there. Go. We'll push, push him in, and then now he's in the middle. We can start to work it again. Here we go. So, like I say, the more you work it, the drier this mozzarella is going to become. So you don't want to overwork it. I am actually overworking it a little bit here which is probably not the best move. Just pop it back in to heat it back up a second. So as soon as I've achieved a shape that I'm happy with, which is pretty much that fella there, then what we're gonna do is bring in some cold water you can put ice cubes in this if you like. And we're gonna plonk him right in the middle. And that will then help that mozzarella hold its shape. Let's take the gloves off for a second. So the mozzarella will now hold its shape whilst it's in there. We can turn the heat off. And we're gonna give that 10 minutes to cool down. And we're gonna come back and cut open a slice. Yes. I know, I've dressed the board up a little bit, but why wouldn't you? Look at that, for a beautiful piece of mozzarella cheese. So I'm going to enjoy this with a nice slice of wheat and spelt crusty loaf and a wild card India pale ale, some vine ripened tomatoes. 
So first things first, let's get a piece of this bread. get this IPA in a glass. How's that? And then let's cut into this beautiful looking mozzarella. Oh look at that folks. It's firm, it's dense, it's not too dry, looks really good. And then let's also chop a tomato up. Nice scoop of butter on the crusty bread. Oh baby. Oh baby doll. Well I suppose first thing I should do, to be fair, is taste it on its own. Mmm. Mm-mm. Yes. And it's not sharp from the lemon either. We'll pop a piece on there. We'll pop some tomato on top. And then what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to hit it with a dash of salt on the tomatoes and just a little dash of pepper. Let's go in for that. Look at that. Mm. I'm masticating on the camera. That truly is wonderful. Mm, mm, mm. What a combination. Let's try a bit of the IPA. Oh, it don't get much better than this, folks. So all that remains then is to do a stretch test with this. So I've got nothing prepared, no pizza bases or anything. So I'm just going to pop it on the here and I'm going to put it in the microwave. Right, let's see if that's enough. It's been nuked for 15 seconds. You tell me, you tell me if that's stretchy mozzarella, I think we've nailed it folks, check it out, I think we've nailed it, oh, oh my gosh, oh it's hot, mmm, so there we go. That's how to make mozzarella in an hour or so at home with minimal ingredients. We'll see you next time.